The final section of this review involves graphing, and we use graphs all the time in the labs. So although you may not see this all the time in the lecture part of the course, uh, you will see it regularly in the lab. So being able to uh, interact with graphs is extremely important, um, and that's why we're going to review it here. Now in most of the examples that I'm going to do here, we're going to uh, solve them mathematically, but I also want to actually graph uh, the line so you can see that we can actually have a, the equation of a line. So it says, what is the slope of a line that contains the following points? Well, these points are x, y coordinates. This is x and this is y. By tradition, x comes first and then y. So it's just a rule that we need to know. So let's look at this. This is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. And I'm gonna spend a little bit of time explaining how to graph this one. And in the future cases, I'm not gonna spend much time. I'm just gonna uh, quickly graph it. So we want one on the x, so this is zero. We go to one and we want three on the y. One, two, three. So we have a point right there. We also want five on the x. One, two, three, four, five. And five on the y. One, two, three, four, five. So those are our two data points. And what we want is then a line. I'm using a business card here as a straight edge. You could use a ruler, but I'm just using this as a straight edge. So that is the line. And what we want is the slope of the line. Well, slope of any line equals the change in y, delta y, over the change in x. And if you look here, you could draw this like a triangle. So the change in y, in this case, is one, two units. The change in x is one, two, three, four units. So it's two divided by four, which is equal to a half. But the other way you can think of um, the change in y is y1 minus y2, and here, usually it's this way, y2 minus y1, and here x2 minus x1. It doesn't really matter, you can subtract them either way, but I'm gonna do it this way. So in this case, y2 is five, minus y1, which is three, which equals two. And on the bottom, we're gonna have x2, which is five, minus x1, which is one, which equals four. If we simplify, we get a half. So you'll notice whether we do it by drawing the line or we do it by changing y over changing x, we still get the same value for the slope because you're essentially doing the same thing, you're just doing it different ways. The reason I'm graphing these in each case instead of just doing them mathematically is because I want you to see that these are actually the coordinates of points on a line. Let's look at another example. Here, it says, find the equation of a line in the slope-intercept form given the information below. Well, the slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. This is the equation of a line. y and x are just the individual values and usually are variables in these equations. So in this case, we're given a point zero three. So we're given a point zero three. So we need to um, basically find or realize that this is the y-intercept because the y-intercept is the place at which you cross the x-axis. Said another way, it's the place at which x equals zero. So the equation of this line is simply y equals two-thirds, which is m, x, plus the y-intercept, three. So this is how we find the equation of the line. When x is zero, you're at the y-intercept, and the slope of the line is two over three. Note that if you actually wanted to see what a graph of this line looks like, what you'd want to do is go to this point, zero, three. So zero, one, two, three on the y-axis, make a point. Now the slope is two-thirds. That means we go up to one, two, and over three, one, two, three, and we put a point. Once we have two points, we can use our straight edge, in my case, a business card, and we can draw the line like
like that. So this actually tells us some information about the line. The equation of this line is this. And any point on this line, if you knew the value of, say, right here, you knew the value of x, you could use this equation to find the value of y. And we do that quite often in the lab. Let's look at a couple more examples. Let's look at this case. In this case, it says find the equation of a line using the y equals mx plus b form, given the information below. Here, we have a value of 1, 2 with a slope of negative 4 fifths. So, how would we actually solve this? Well, if we, what we want to do is find the y-intercept. That's our goal. Well, remember, it's y equals mx plus b. It turns out we know a point of x, we know a point of y, and we know the value of the slope. We can solve for b. So we want to plug in what we know. So we know that there's one of the points on this line, y equals 2, m is negative 4 fifths, and x is 1 plus b. So in this case, 1 times negative 4 fifths is just negative 4 fifths. So 2 equals negative 4 fifths plus b. We need to then um, add 4 fifths to both sides in order to get it to cancel out. So we have 2 plus 4 fifths equals b. Now, since this is... Um, you can't directly add this. We need to get a common denominator. So in order to find b, b equals, well, we have to add 2 plus 4 fifths. In order to get this a 5 on the bottom, we have to multiply it by 5 over 5 times 2 over 1. And what we end up with is 10 fifths plus 4 fifths is what our value of b is or b equals 14 fifths. And I'm just going to leave it like that. It's 14 fifths, which is just a little under 3, right? It's a fifth under 3, so 2.8. If you wanted to convert this to a number, it would be 2.8. Now we can find out the total equation of the line. y equals m minus 4 fifths x plus 2.8. Now, because I wanted to show you that this is actually coordinates that actually give you a line, let's actually graph this thing. So first of all, find the point that we know, 1, 2. 1 on the x-axis, 1, 2 on the y-axis. Now we need to use a slope of negative 4 fifths. So we want to go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is another point on the line. When we draw this line, it's not perfect because it looks like it goes through exactly 3. The y-intercept is actually 2.8. All right, so because of the thickness of the pen or because more because of the thickness of these dots, I made them too fat. Um, basically, um, this is going to uh, not be perfect, but you get the basic idea. So this, with this information, I can find the equation of the line. Now, if I know some x point, I can find some y point. And we use this stuff like this all the time in the lab. Let's look at a couple more examples. In this case, we have um, find the equation of the line for this. So we have the y-intercept is 2, and there's a point called 4, negative 1. Well, let's do it mathematically first, and then we'll draw the line. So first of all, we need to find y equals mx plus b. We are given b um, here, because we have the y-intercept. We also are given a y and an x value, so we could, find, we could find m that way. Or we can remember that the slope equals delta y over delta x where delta y is y2 minus y1. So let's take the y's. The y's that we know are minus 2 minus 2, because this is point zero 
two. That's what the y-intercept means. So the x's are four minus zero. So we have negative three over four as the slope of this line. So y equals um, negative three fourths x plus two. Now, if we wanted to graph this line, what we would do is we would go to the point y-intercept of 2, and we would also go to the point 4, negative 1. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 1. And we could draw the line like this. If we look at this and we draw the triangle, it's hard to see because it's right on the it's right on the um, bolded line, you could see that we go down 1, 2, 3. So the change in y is negative 3. And we go over 1, 2, 3, 4. The change in x is 4, which is giving us this slope right here. So this is just um, how you can do this. Again, you could have also solved it by you know v, you know x, you know y, you could find m. It's just another way to do it. The very last example here. So here we're given two points, minus uh, 3, 10, and 5, minus 6. And because it's the last one, I'm going to do it the opposite way. First thing I'm going to do is draw the, um, draw the points on the graph, and then we're going to find everything out. So if we go to minus 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and go up to 10, 10 is the top one. So that's right there. Now we go to 5, minus 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative, and we have these points. And I'm hoping my card is long enough here, oops, and it barely is, so I can draw this line. So this is the line that we're interested in here. So now we need to find, to find y equals mx plus b, the slope and the y-intercept. So the slope, as you know, is delta y over delta x. So delta y is minus 6 minus 10, which is minus 16. And delta x is 5 minus, minus 3, which is 8. Because it's minus a negative, we add, which is negative 2. Now we know y equals minus 2x plus b. We don't know b. But we have two points, so use either one. you got to be consistent. Use either these two points or these two points, but use either one. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use this one. 10 equals negative 2 times negative 3 plus b. Multiply those together, and we get 6 plus b. 10 equals 6 plus b minus 6 minus 6. b equals 4. So the slope of the line is 4. So the overall equation of this line is y equals minus 2x plus 4. If you look here, the line goes right through the point at 4. So they, these are several examples of graphing lines. More generally, in this section, we've gone over a math review. Note, notice, uh, you probably have if you've been watching all these videos, that there's not a lot of detail here. Mostly it's just examples. So we're kind of um, assuming that you've already had this stuff before and this is just a refresher. If you do need more details, um, this is algebra. Um, this is right from an algebra textbook that we uh, borrowed from um, from uh, the Lumen Learning platform. And I, you can find things on algebra on sites like Khan Academy and things like that. If you do need more algebra review, it's not a bad idea. I just want to be clear that you're not going to need to know how to do every single one of the things that you learned in this review. However, generally speaking, being familiar with this math will be extremely beneficial for you in the chemistry course. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, or whatever the case may be, math is an integral part of chemistry. So it's extremely important um, that you, you brush up on it a little bit. Maybe this is all really easy review for you, and that's great. If not, please practice with it a little bit um, because it will help you out tremendously. Alex has many questions on it that will help you to practice this math. And for the most part, the questions on Alex are relevant math questions. Similar things will come up during the course. So 
uh, please spend some time on that. And uh, we look forward to working with you in the course.